George W. Hogan, Jr. of McLeansboro, Illinois, has a most unusual hobby. She is making a collection of handkerchiefs. Handkerchiefs autographed by famous people, both here and abroad. The one she has just received is from a screen star, Deanna Durbin. Mrs. Hogan mounts the handkerchiefs carefully on cards to protect them from dust and dirt. She has more than 1,200 in her collection and prices them highly. She started this novel hobby to amuse her invalid mother, but now herself is an enthusiastic collector. She's very proud of this set of handkerchiefs, autographed by wives of the presidents. She only started her collection a few years ago, or this set would be larger. Here's another out of handkerchiefs autographed by justices of the United States Supreme Court. A number of world figures have added to her collection. The one from Madame Schumann Heink really started her in this hobby. And there are other prize ones too. Mrs. Hogan's hobby is a strange one. But think what a boon it will prove to be if she ever catches hay fever. The most remarkable dollhouse in the world, Titania's Palace, conceived and started in a fanciful mood more than 30 years ago by Sir Neville Wilkinson of Dublin, Ireland for his small daughter. One, of course, was a firm believer in fairies, and this amazing structure was built as a home for Titania, the legendary queen of the fairies. The little palace has been fitted out with a world of rare miniatures, some of them of great value and exquisite workmanship. That golden sleigh, for instance. The tiny goblets are part of a set of Bristol glass more than a hundred years old. The little bronze cannon you see was made by Michael Mann of Nuremberg near the end of the 16th century. The little strong box, also a rare antique, has a real secret lock mechanism. A miniature gold helmet presented by the Tsar of Russia. There are 17 halls and rooms in the palace. This is Titania's throne room with its ornate inlaid throne. Here, as elsewhere in the tiny palace, are amazing objects of art in miniature, gathered from all over the world. And next, we have a peep into Titania's bedroom. The little palace even has its own chapel with an organ which actually can be played. The amazing doll's palace took 15 years to complete and has been exhibited at benefits for crippled children in many parts of the world. Shades of Daniel Boone and the other pioneers. Rifle clubs are springing up here and there in which they wouldn't think of shooting anything but an old muzzle loader. Making your own ammunition as they did in the old days is one of the strong appeals of this strange sport. Here at Charlottesville, Pennsylvania, members of the Blue Mountain Muzzle Loading Rifle Association have become adept in handling the century-old shooting irons. The tricky art of loading one of the old-time guns cannot be acquired overnight. The powder charge must be just right, and the ball snugly fitted in the bore with an oily patch of cloth. Well, certainly that ball should be tight enough. The old pieces weigh from 12 to 35 pounds. No shooting from the hip with these babies. After the percussion cap goes into place, she's ready to fire. In the old days, the long riflemen who roamed the Alleghenies could bark a squirrel or pick off a red skin with ease with the quaint muzzle loaders. It's surprising to find how accurate they are even today, once you get the knack of shooting them. The club members here hold regular marksmanship competitions. 
And if you don't think they're good, just look. It's stranger than fiction. Of all the strange jobs in the world, Dr. A. Edison Battisher of Baltimore, Maryland, has one of the... He raises house flies, 2,500 of them a day or more, just for the purpose of killing them. Dr. Battisher is the special entomologist for a company that makes sectocides. In order to try out their preparations, the company needs thousands upon thousands of flies in the course of a year. So many, in fact, that there is no way to catch enough of them. So the doctor raises them. There's a batch of fly larvae just hatched out. They live in this stage 12 or 13 days. Following three and a half days in the pupa stage, the flies emerge ready for a two or three months life of disease spreading. But not the flies the good doctor raises. As fast as they reach normal growth, he shoes them into an execution chamber and prepares a gas attack for them. New chemical mixtures are constantly being tried out in man's war against the insect world. Now to see whether the new mixture has what it takes. And there's plenty proof that it has. A strange occupation, but one that benefits all humanity. Many a large member has had to ride the goat, but little Janice Higdon of Bellflower, California, shows you the real way to be a Bronco Buster Billy Goat style. <laughs> she goes in for fancy riding, too. Circus stunts, too, and for a five-year-old, that's very cute. Who would have thought that you could teach a goat to do tricks? Janice's father, W.C. Higdon, believes in making his goats work for a living. This is a rare sight indeed. A goat team that's as good as any mule for farm work. Now here's a contraption that has real merit. I'll bet this scene puts ideas in many a youngster's head. A two goat powered mower for the front lawn. Well, if that isn't the answer to a boy's dream, I don't know what is. Certainly, little Janice Higdon will be the envy of thousands, including, I must admit, yours truly. The Higdons have solved the problem of making work a pleasure. And on the day of rest, Janice has her coach and four to take her to Sunday school or for an afternoon's ride. This is certainly the life for a young lady of five. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. 